today's class today we are going to study about the coagulants and anticoagulants comes under the subject medicinal chemistry second that is bp 501t and myself ms ritu parna palit so we are here to study about the coagulants and anticoagulants both the uh, these two classes are very important in many types of reactions in our body going on coagulation is also very important at the same time anticoagulation is also very important but uh, in the respective uh, uh, places where they are needed to be present so uh, let us discuss about the coagulation and anticoagulation process first of all we are going to discuss about coagulation so coagulation is a process in it is also called as hemostasis in which what happens there is a arrest of blood loss that means uh, in uh, uh, if anybody got a wound a fresh wound there is a um, there is a flow of blood out of the wound suddenly and after 2 to 3 minutes what we will see what we are seeing that the blood stopped coming out of that wound that open wound and some red clots or uh, a thick blood clot is appeared on the very most uppermost surface of the wound that is on the epidermis of uh, uh, the epidermis layer of the skin so what happens here this process is called as coagulation to decrease or to uh, stop the blood loss from that wound this process happens by itself we need not to do anything but sometimes what happens if there is a big wound or there is a operation happened so post operative uh, procedures or uh, any other uh, procedures where we need to coagulate the blood so after the uh, wounded uh, after the um, uh, uh, miss uh, fortunate situation any accident or anything uh, we need to stop the blood oozing out of the wound the coagulants are used so hemostasis or blood coagulation it involves a complex interaction between the injured blood vessels the platelets and the coagulation factors there are 13 coagulation factors which which plays a very important role in uh, coagulation so coagulation are uh, coagulants are the substances which promote the coagulation and are indicated in hemorrhagic state so any state where uh, hemorrhage is happening hemorrhage means there is a uh, flow of blood outside the body when there is a flow of blood or inside the body when some kind of hemorrhage is happening so to stop that hemorrhage condition coagulants are used if the wound is a small then it will happen by itself by the conjugation of these three things that is injured blood vessels the platelets and the coagulation factor but if there is a need of uh, um incorporation of coagulation then certain agents are used to stop the blood from coming out so this is the classification the very most the most important or the first coagulant which is vitamin k it's a natural um, agent that is in form of k1 that is from a plant Uh, it's uh, fat soluble the examples are phytonadione phytonadione and phylloquinone also called as phytonadione is also called as phylloquinone second is uh, this is natural whereas this is k3 is synthetic if it is synthetic then there is a two types we have seen that is fat soluble and water soluble the example for sat fat soluble is mena dione and aceta mena dione and in water soluble we have seen several uh, examples like mena dione sodium bisulfate and mena dione sodium diphosphate 
So, these two examples are from water soluble and from fat soluble that is menadione and acetaminodione. And uh, there are some other uh, characters also the miscellaneous class of this uh, um, uh, uh, classification that is miscellaneous fibrinogen, desmopressin, anti hemophilic factors, adrenochrome, mono semi carbazone, rutin and ethan silate. So, there are uh, various agents which are also considered in this class in this coagulation process in uh, the classification. So, these are the basic classes which are having the category of uh, uh, coagulants. So, let us study about vitamin K which is the most important and uh, both naturally and synthetically prepared. So, natural is uh, it is a fat soluble, it is a dietary vitamin which is principally required for the synthesis of clotting factor in our body only. Vitamin K it acts as a cofactor at a late stage in the synthesis by liver of coagulation proteins, prothrombin factor number 7, 9th and 10th. I told you earlier that there are 13 factors, we will discuss in our later slides the factors also uh, and in details you will study the factors in uh, pharmacology subjects here we will uh, just go through the uh, clotting factors which are responsible. So, vitamin K as we know it is a fat soluble vitamin, it is a dietary principle which is required for the synthesis of clotting factors. Vitamin K it acts as a cofactor at a late stage in the synthesis by liver of coagulation process. Prothrombin factors that is prothrombin and factors 7th, 9th and 10th. Vitamin K it has a basic naphthoquinone structure if you see the structure of vitamin K which is uh, uh, this. So, if you see the structure, vitamin K has a basic naphthoquinone structure with or without a side chain. There can be, there cannot be, it is uh, depending upon the R group. That is, if there is, then it will be phytal and feral groups are there, and normally there is a H that is hydrogen is present in vitamin structure of vitamin K and vitamin K is used in the process of prophylaxis and in the treatment of bleeding due to deficiency of clotting factor. Some patients, some people are there who are deficient of clotting factor, those are getting treated with externally uh, medicines, externally drugs such as vitamin K which is given to the patient for clotting their wounds. So, uh, you have seen many times that a person who got a wound and the blood is not, uh, the, it is bleeding all the time. So, they have to take a clotting uh, agent to clot the blood so that there should not be so much of blood loss from the body. Again some more information about vitamin K that is synthetic vitamin K. Let us see about it. Vitamin K1, phytonadione or mephintone is the form of vitamin K which are most often used therapeutically. It is safe for used in infants also, pregnant women and patients with G6P deficiency. What is G6P deficiency? It is glucose 6-phosphate deficiency that is the glucose that is very important uh, enzyme for glucose metabolism in our body. It uh, helps in conversion of glucose into fructose in our body. So, vitamin K1 is a form of vitamin K, it is a derivative of vitamin K. Most often it is used therapeutically, it is very safe in uh, infants, pregnant women and patients with G6P deficiency. And at the same time, phytonadione is 
lipid soluble as we have already discussed it that vitamin K is lipid soluble. It has a faster onset than vitamin K3 or vitamin K4. Vitamin K3 is called as menadion and vitamin K4 is called as menadiol sodium diphosphate. So, this is the structure for all three of it. This is vitamin K1. The ring system in the previous slide, the ring system of vitamin K, you can see that it is the same, the same and a little bit different that is uh, in vitamin K. So, vitamin K1 has the same ring, vitamin K3 also has the same ring and vitamin K4 also has the same ring, only there is a difference with the uh, this part of the ring where it is getting attached with the double bondo instead of double bondo it is attached with a single bondo because there are presence of phosphate group here sodium salt of phosphate groups are here getting attached in vitamin K4. So, vitamin K, K1, K3 and K4 all are responsible for clotting of blood from the wounded place. Now, let us come for anticoagulants. Anticoagulants are just the opposite of coagulants. The importance of anticoagulants in our uh, body is also as same as the coagulants. If there is any clotting happens inside the body at any time, then anticoagulants are being given to the patient for the breakage of that coagulation. So, there are certain conditions in our body when uh, the patient is having uh, or there is a preparation of continuous preparation of having coagulation in the various organs or in the uh, blood vessels which is very harmful, very dangerous life threatening condition formation of coagulation which ultimately uh, creates a life threatening condition for the patient. So, they need to get dissociated they need to get breakdown to use. Uh, so, anticoagulants are being used in that conditions. So, anticoagulants they generally prevents clotting from uh, formation of an uh, or existing clot from an uh, old or enlarging, but uh, it uh, um, also uh, promotes not to having so much of clotting after a post operative uh, procedure. Like uh, if a person has uh, a surgery, so there need not to be so much of clotting at the same time of uh, surgery. So, to uh, eliminate that condition anticoagulation, anticoagulation agents are given to the patient. So, the drugs that inhibit thrombus formation and prevent coagulation or formation of new blood clots, they are called as anticoagulants or the anticoagulant agents, which inhibit either the action of coagulation factor that is heparin or interfere with the synthesis of coagulation factor that is warfarin. These two drugs, these two medicine are generally being used to Act, uh, to um, inhibit the action of coagulation factor and synthesis of coagulation factor. So, these two agents heparin and warfarin are generally used. First that is heparin or unfractioned heparin is a heterogeneous mixture of sulfated mucopolysaccharides with the uh, molecular weight that is 10,000 to 20,000 gram per mole. Its biological activity is dependent upon the endogenous anticoagulant antithrombin. So, the first agent that is heparin 
is uh, the properties which are written that it has a molecular weight of 10,000 to 20,000 gram per mole. Its uh, uh, biological activity is depending upon the endogenous anticoagulant, antithrombin and it is a mixture of sulfated mucopolysaccharide. It is a heterogeneous mixture of sulfated mucopolysaccharide. So, the heparin is very useful in uh, um, as a anticoagulant agent. Generally, uh, we see the use of heparin or warfarin uh, in the when there is a uh, um, blood uh, uh, coagulation in patients. So, these are the natural uh, naturally occurring uh, agents, heparin is a naturally occurring agent. So, this is safe for use in patients and the shorter it has a shorter chain, low molecular weight, fractions of heparin, egg, enozaparin that is a, a, a fraction of heparin, enozaparin, deltaparin, daltaparin and tenzaparin. These are the three fractions of heparin which are generally used to inhibit the activated factor 10, but it has less effect on the thrombin than the high molecular weight species. So, there are certain as we have seen from the slide that there are certain fractions of heparin also which are being used to inhibit the activated factors that is the activated factor 10 and it has a less effect on thrombin than the high molecular weight species. So, anti as the slide suggests that anticoagulants are having exactly the opposite effect of coagulants. So, this is the classification for anticoagulants. There are two types of anticoagulants we have seen that is parenteral and oral. The parenteral has indirect thrombin inhibitors and direct thrombin inhibitors. The indirect thrombin inhibitors has heparin that is low molecular weight heparins, fonda parins, fonda parinux and danaparide. So, these are the examples of indirect thrombin inhibitors. Next is direct thrombin inhibitors that is lepiridin, bivaliridin and argetroban. These are the examples of direct thrombin inhibitors. Oral anticoagulants, the examples are they are divided into certain derivatives on the basis of structures. So, comarin derivative by shydroxy Comarin that is also called as dicumerol, warfarin sodium, acinocumerol, nico malone, and ethyl biscumat acetate. And in dendion derivative, it has phenindion. Direct factor 10A inhibitor is riva roxaban, and oral direct thrombin inhibitor is dabigatran. Eticylate. So, these are the examples, this is the classification for your anticoagulant that are divided into two types that is parenteral and oral. The uh, drugs which are uh, um, used in parenteral and oral anticoagulants are uh, we will we are going to study the main main of the uh, which are given in our syllabus. So, anticoagulants two types like uh, they are uh, the medicines which are used in vitro that is heparin, calcium complexing agent that is sodium citrate, sodium oxalate and sodium editate. On the right most ta table of the, uh, the right most uh, part of the table is having the amount and the uh, concentration by which this is going to be used and generally it is being used. And the last is that is antiplatelet drug which is very important that is clopidodril. It is a newer congener of triclopyridine, triclopidine ability to inhibit the platelet dysfunction and therapeutic efficacy. So, these are the drugs which are generally used in vitro as a anticoagulant agents. 
So, first agent which we are going to study about that is warfarin. Warfarin uh, synthesis of warfarin is a single step process. It has 4 hydroxycomerin and benzylacetone. So, these two in presence of pyridine will give a structure of warfarin, they will give warfarin. So, warfarin is a drug which is used as anticoagulant and it is uh, made from these two starting material that is 4 hydroxycomerin and benzyl acetone in presence of an environment of pyridine which gives warfarin. So, warfarin is used as anticoagulant for preventing and treatment of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. What is pulmonary embolism here? Pulmonary embolism means when there is a uh, uh, coagulation of blood in lungs to treat that warfarin is, warfarin is generally used. So, in uh, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Embolism can be of other types as well. So, what will be the mode of mechanism, uh, mechanism of action of warfarin that is warfarin or it is a vitamin K antagonist because it is uh, anti um, coagulating factor. It produces effect on blood coagulation by interfering with the cyclic interconversion of vitamin K, vitamin K 2, 3 epoxide. So, these two like vitamin K and vitamin K 2, 3 epoxide, this, these agents are getting in uh, cyclic interconversions. So, they uh, uh, warfarin shows effect on blood coagulation by interfering the cyclic interconversion of vitamin K, vitamin K 2, 3 epoxide. Then vitamin K, it is a essential cofactor that necessary for the post translational carboxylation of the glutamic acid residues on the N terminal position of the specific clotting factor. So, there are certain terminals, there are basically two type of terminal, N terminal and C terminal positions in the clotting factors. So, the vitamin K is essential cofactor which is necessary for the post translational modification that is carboxylation happens of the glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is a type of uh, amino acid residue on the end terminal position of specific clotting factor that is second, seventh, ninth and tenth and anticoagulant proteins like with, uh, protein C. This gamma glutamyl carboxylation results in the new amino acid gamma carboxyglutamate which though which through chelation of the calcium ions causes the proteins to undergo a conformational change and this change in tertiary structure allows the 4 vitamin K the various vitamins K which we have studies in the classification the 4 vitamin K dependent clotting factor to become activated and bind with negatively charged phospholipid membrane during the clotting cascade activation. So, as uh, we have seen that the uh, warfarin which is an antagonist of vitamin K interferes with the activity of vitamin K and the clotting factors and produces its effects, shows its effects as anticoagulants. What will be the chemistry as we have seen the structure here of warfarin? The chemistry says the coumarin derivatives are all water insoluble lactones. So, the SAR is based upon the substitution on lactone ring and uh, uh, also can exist in solution of two diastereomeric cyclic hemiketal conformers in addition to its open chain conformers. What happens is here is 
the cumarin derivatives are all water soluble lactones and the uh, con, um, the modifications are done on the uh, lactone ring system so the solution of two diastereomeric cyclic hemiketal conformation uh, conformers in addition to its open chain conformers because it's been suggested that vitamin k forms an active hemiketal in vivo that means inside the body it forms a hemiketal that is active hemiketal form inside the body and the cyclic hemiketal of the vitamin k antagonists such as warfarin also may be active conformers in vivo and the clinical used preparation of warfarin that is uh, it's a racemic mixture but the enantiomers are not equipotent that is the s warfarin and r warfarin so the s warfarin is least four folds more potent than r warfarin so there is a very important role a of uh, enantiomers the racemization because it is showing that the s warfarin shows much more um, um, potent effect than r warfarin and the difference the, the difference in activities and metabolism of enantiomer in the is the key to understand several stereoselective drug interaction in case of s cumerol acinocumerol the r isomer is responsible for activity so in case of warfarin s warfarin is more potent than r warfarin whereas in case of acinocumerol the r isomer is more potent than s or you can say simply the r isomer is responsible for its activity so this was the chemistry of warfarin so warfarin and other cumarin derivatives which undergoes extensive hepatic oxidative metabolism they are catalyzed by isoenzymes to give 6 and 7 hydroxy warfarins as a major intermediates why uh, because hydroxy warfarins will give much more better absorption in vivo and produce much give uh, and produce very good effects in uh, comparison to the previous formed derivatives so this is the uh, general structure or you can say the ring system of uh, uh, cumarin that is starting from the numbering 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so this is warfarin having a hydroxy group this is dicumerol in place of hydroxy group there is a ketone group next is 6 hydroxy warfarin it has an hydroxy group in place of 6 and 7 hydroxy that has a hydroxy group at the 7th position in the ring system so it is very much uh, uh, so the modification by addition of hydroxy warfarins is the uh, so the modifications which are Uh, done by addition of hydroxy groups are very good and uh, gives potent activities so these are some agents also for uh, coagulating agents and anticoagulating agent these are the other agents so uh, what i was telling in the uh, beginning of this class that uh, we are going to see about the blood clotting factors there are 13 blood clotting factors first is fibrinogen then prothrombin then tissue thromboplastin calcium proacelerin labial factor also called as the proacelerin labial factor then uh, uh, pro convertin stable uh, factor next is anti hemophilic a factor and anti hemophilic globulin next is anti hemophilic b factor next stuart or stuart power prover factor next is plasma thromboplastin antecedent next is hegman sin uh, factor and contact factor and last is fibrin stabilizing factor so these are the factors which 
are responsible for blood clotting and at the same time anticoagulants are those agents which opposes blood clotting that means they opposes uh, the clotting factors which are mentioned here and produces the anticoagulation. So, the general use will be various type of uses we can see uh, in for uh, um, anticoagulation that is uh, in deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, unstable angina, rheumatic heart disease that is atrial fibrillation also uh, in atrial fibrillation also. Next is cerebrovascular diseases, uh, various surgeries that is vascular surgeries, prosthetic heart walls if they are incorporation of prosthetic heart walls. Next retinal thrombosis extra corporeal circulation, hemodialysis and difibrillation syndrome. So, these are the uh, various conditions where the use of anticoagulants we can see. These are the references uh, you can follow. The uh, chemistry part is taken from FOES, the synthesis part is taken from synthesis of essential drugs and uh, Berger medicinal chemistry. The pharmacology part is taken from essential of medicinal ecology and Lippincott's. Uh, thank you for this lecture.